Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy and I finally got around to Ryzen 3, have it here. The Ryzen 3 1200 today is going to be going up against the Intel i3-7350K. So this is quite an interesting one. And the results are closer than you might think. So let's jump right into it then uh, with these two CPUs and see what they're all about. So the Ryzen 3 1200 is a quad-core, four-core CPU with four threads. Now it's coming in with a base clock of 3.1 gigahertz and a turbo clock of 3.4 gigahertz. And of course it's unlocked and we'll talk about the overclocking a little bit later. The uh, little i3 here, so the Intel 7350K is a two core or dual core CPU with hyper threading. So it has the same amount of threads, four threads. It's coming in with a 4.2 gigahertz base clock and no turbo clock, but this is also unlocked. Now let's talk about the test rigs then, and then we'll talk about the overclocking. So the Ryzen 3 was tested with the Gigabyte X370 Gaming K3 motherboard, which I'll be reviewing soon. The uh, 7350K was tested with a Z270, obviously, the ASRock Fatality Gaming K6, which is actually a really nice board. Now, both of these CPUs were tested with the same memory, some G-Skill memory, set at 2933 MHz for all the testing. They were both tested with the same GPU, the ASUS Strix GTX 1080Ti. The uh, 7350K doesn't come with a cooler, so I had to use the Noctua cooler with this one. This is something I will take into consideration when I draw the conclusion. The uh, 1200 here comes with the Wraith Stealth cooler, uh, which is uh, smaller than the other one, but um, it still does a fairly solid job there. Now let's talk about the overclocking then. So at their stock clocks when I ran IDA64 and the CPU stress test for five minutes, they both seem to hover around the mid 40s, which is still quite a win for the 1200 given how much smaller the uh, cooler is that I was using with it. Once we started overclocking, the uh, 1200 here went up to 3.9 gigahertz on all four cores. That's pretty much what I would expect and I would say that's pretty typical with the CPUs. This is a retail model. Both of these are retail models by the way. Uh, so at 3.9 gigahertz, when I ran IDA64, it would go up to about 75 degrees Celsius, which is pretty solid on a stock cooler there. The 7350K here went much higher though in clock speed. It went up to 4.8 gigahertz on those two cores there. So that's very, very solid. Now temperature-wise, when I ran in IDA64, it went up to 77 degrees Celsius, and that's using a much larger cooler as well. So definitely a win here attempts for the uh, Ryzen 3 1200 but this CPU is soldered down which Intel could learn a thing or two because even their i9s aren't so yeah big win there in temps for the uh, 1200 but that is to be expected so let's jump into the benchmarks then as always I have a bunch of different ones I'm going to be using and I'll show you guys the stock uh, results and also their overclock results so without further ado let's jump into it and see how these two CPUs perform
so it was actually pretty close. Uh, yeah, these guys were neck and neck in a lot of them. The 1200 won in some of the tests, seemingly doing better in things that require the kind of like raw uh, CPU horsepower. Of course, for uh, physical cores, they're always going to be better than a dual core with hyper threading. But that being said, the high clock speed of the 7350K really helps out when it comes to gaming, which is something that a lot of you guys would already know. So what do I make about these then? As a helicopter goes over, as always when I'm filming. <laughs> Uh, so basically, yeah, I would say that in gaming generally, it's going to be pretty close depending on the game I would say if it can really uh, leverage the uh, four physical cores of the 1200 it would probably do better But if it's one that likes clock speed a bit more then the 7350k is probably going to be doing a bit better But it's obviously just going to depend on the application Which brings us nicely into the conclusion then and what do I make of these two CPUs? So we have to bring price into the equation so right now at Playtech in New Zealand, you can pick up the Ryzen 3 1200 for 169 New Zealand dollars. And that's with the cooler as well. If you want to pick up this 7350K from Playtech, it's going to set you back 259 New Zealand dollars. So it's almost $100 more expensive to go for the 7350K. Not only that, but this doesn't come with a cooler, obviously. I mean, look at the box. So you're going to have to spend, I mean, you could probably get a $50 New Zealand cooler that would be just fine with this CPU. Uh, so you have to add that onto it. So all in all, it's nearly double the price for the 7350K over the Ryzen 3 1200. So is it worth it then to pay all that extra money? No, definitely not. I would say that if you are deciding out of these two CPUs, you have to pick one or the other, I would go for the 1200. Just because it's going to be cheaper and I think going forward more and more games will probably end up working better on this CPU rather than this one. It's going to be better to have the quad core, you know, with the four physical cores. That being said, I don't really regard either of these CPUs to be exceptionally good value for money. And before you blow your top off, this is the issue with Ryzen. Um, it's kind of like the, uh, you know, you just need to spend a little bit more and get something a bit better. But personally, I would say that the 1200 here is quite good value if you're on a budget. But if you can, I would save up a bit more money and get its uh, Ryzen 5 bigger brother, the uh, 1400. I think that would be a lot better value. That way you get uh, four cores with the eight threads. I think it'll be better moving forward. And overall, I just would think of it as the uh, better kind of value for money buy. Yes, you're gonna have to spend a bit more money, but the lifespan of that GP, uh, CPU will be better. And I just think of it as the better CPU. So yeah, that's basically how I would put it out after testing a lot of these CPUs. But yeah, the 7350K isn't good value, that is for sure. And the 1200 is much better value, but as I said, I think the 1400 would be slightly better. But that is just my opinion as always, so I want to leave it with you guys. Let me know in the comment section down below, do you agree with me? Which Ryzen CPU do you think is the best value? And if you're somebody out there on a budget, um, what CPUs are you looking at? And which ones do you recommend if maybe you've recently bought a system? Maybe you picked the 1200, maybe you picked the 1300X. Let me know in the comment section down below. I want this to be a discussion. I'll uh, read through all the comments and I'll reply to the ones that really catch my eye. And as always, I thank you guys for watching this video. Please uh, subscribe to my channel, Tech Showdown, if you haven't already, because it shows your support and makes me very happy inside, and it makes Teddy happy as well. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.